Good evening. I'm Jeff Koinange, and this is Jeff Koinange live at the Villa Rosa Kempinski. And if it's Wednesday, you know it's all about politics 101. And yes, many of you out there know this for a fact. Miguna Miguna is running for governor of Nairobi County. Anyone who has listened, anyone who has seen him on this show and others know that for a fact. But we want to take it one step further because we don't see him that often. He's commuting between here and Canada for obvious reasons. He has to work to pay the bills. But he's determined to be the next governor of this county. What is he going to do as governor? What are his policies, many of you ask? Can he do what others before him have not? In other words, can he turn the city of Nairobi around? We're going to discuss that and many other issues plaguing our country today. Uh, chief amongst them, hate speech. How about the Supreme Court setup? Now that there are minus three justices, those are issues we need to discuss. And of course, the IEBC. Does it need to go? Is there enough time to constitute a new one before the next general elections? Important questions, pertinent questions, which you must discuss with the man with the same name twice. His Twitter handle is at Miguna Miguna. Mine is at Quinanga Jeff. The hashtag we're using tonight, Miguna times two. In other words, Miguna X2. Sit back. Miguna, good to see you again. Thank you. Or should I say governor? You should say, you should start practicing. <laughs> Not, not, not His Excellency, not Your Excellency. No. That one, I will never you use. You don't want that? No. You just want simply Governor? Miguna, do you, okay, look, the, you've been here a couple of times before, and you announced, yes. and then re-announced. Yes. And since that time, especially on social media, there has been a wave. Let's, let's not kid ourselves. There's been a wave. People coming from out of the woodwork saying that they will support you. Shocked the hell out of me and I'm sure many other people. Why do you think that is? It is more than a wave. It's a tsunami. <laughs> this thing is bigger than a wave. The youth were waiting for the right time. They were waiting for the right candidate. They were waiting for the right vision. They were waiting for the right platform. And it all merged on my candidature. And they have joined like nobody's business. I have volunteers numbering hundreds of youth in Nairobi who are, are doing what free work free work some are doing graphics some are just mobilizing among friends and relatives and colleagues some are going to neighborhoods to speak some are chasing Sonko from one neighborhood to another <laughs> some are taking pictures of Kidero's failures some are doing research in libraries and on the internet I mean it is just beautiful so you think you can actually take this, Miguna? Do you actually... I think I'm winning. If elections were held today, I'm absolutely 100% sure that I would win, not by a small margin, a huge margin, and they know. Okay. That is why you have seen them come with fake opinion polls right. all over through their cartel-controlled and cartel-owned media. Mm. They come up with things that is mind-boggling. For example, they do not say who commissioned the polls. They do not say when the polls were conducted. The companies that purport to do the polls are not registered and are not operating legally in Kenya. They don't even exist. You look for websites because most opinion polling companies have websites. They don't have websites. Mm -hmm. They don't release the data. They don't release the questions. They don't tell you how many people they questioned. They don't tell you how they question them. They don't tell you the answers. They just give you the results. The cartel is scared to death, and they are trying to fight back. Can you beat that cartel? Uh, you see, the beauty of this is this. The cartel has money. The cartel has no brain. Hmm. And the cartel is used to hiring incompetent people. So here they have fresh, organic ideas revolutionary transformative ideas mm. with nearly no money but with a lot of volunteers people who are motivated to change things against money only 
money does not defeat vision. Money buys elections? Well, money does not necessarily buy elections. Money probably can try to rig elections, but you can only rig close elections. The way it is, and this I have demonstrated through online pollings that they have been doing themselves. Uh, for example, Caroline Mutoko came up with a poll she was conducting and pulled it down mm -hmm. when I was over 50 and the, my closest opponent was below 20%. They had to pull it down because the margin is so wide that if you tried to rig that election, this place will burn. And they know it. You cannot stop the youth of Nairobi mm. from getting what they've been yearning for for 50 years. Okay, what, is, what, what are you going to do for the youth of Nairobi? Because okay, let me tell you what I'm going to do because this is very important. The youth of Nairobi, number one, wants a visionary leader that will give them hope. Hope for a better tomorrow. You cannot have a better tomorrow if the system is controlled by cartels and qualification does not matter. This youth is highly educated, highly talented, no job opportunities. No job opportunities because jobs are given to accolades, they are given to cartel manipulated uh, tribesmen or tribeswomen, they are given to people who can help the cartel steal. This youth is not stealing. So the youth must get employment. Mm -hmm. The unemployment in Nairobi is over 65%. Yeah. That is unsustainable. If you go anywhere else in the world and the unemployment is 15%, the government falls down. If you went to Canada today and you're a governor, in Canada it's premier, mm -hmm. the head of the provinces, Province, yeah. or the head of the country, the prime minister, if unemployment nationally or provincially gets to 15%, even in the United States, the government would fall. And yet here, nothing happens. 65 plus percent. Plus percent. So number one, hope, transformation of the system, jobs, 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 jobs. Then beyond that, I want to make sure that this system is cleaned up of corruption. Corruption is what is denying the youth, the women, the men, the opportunities to prosper. Even individually as entrepreneurs, as creative individuals, as industrialists, as entrepreneurs. If you have to spend 30% of your capital, your seed capital, to bribe people to set up a business or to tender in order to get a contract so that you can supply goods or services. That cannot be sustainable for a person without capital. Is that going to be a thing of the past under your administration? It would never even be mentioned. I'm telling you by the time I'm finished with this city, you will not be able to recognize it. Come on. You will not be able to recognize the roads because they will be wide. The roads. They will be well done. There will be no potholes. And clearly there will be no traffic jams. Miguna, because that's, that's a pipe dream. No, no, no. The that's reason, a pipe dream. Okay, let me tell you why it can be done. It's being done in Ethiopia. I'm not even giving the example of Canada. And someone like me has traveled widely, has lived in many parts of the world, and I know it is happening. It's happening in Ethiopia. It's happening in Rwanda. It's happening in Botswana. It happens in South Africa. It clearly happened uh, in Lagos under uh, Governor... Fashola, Fashola yes. he came and found everything had come to a standstill. It was a mess. And within five years, Lagos now is one of the most thriving cities in Africa. So what I'm trying to tell you is that, and Nairobi is not even at the level of Lagos when Fashola took over. So I'm taking a rotten, disorganized, dysfunctional, completely looted city, but not as bad as Lagos when Fashola took over. And within five years, Yes, if I don't do it, I would want to be hung, hung, literally hung, at Uhuru Park. You're saying that now? Yes, you go and hang me at Uhuru Park. If you don't turn If I am not able to do it. If I'm not able to give jobs to these kids, this young, young the youth, mm. if I'm not able to, 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 to deal with the infrastructure, the roads, if I'm not able to tackle the slums, 
because I'm not going for the so-called slum upgradement or uh, you know, upgrading the slums. That's, that's nonsense. These slums will have to be, they have to be past tense. We have to build proper, affordable housing for all residents. Kidero hasn't done that in five years. What Kidero makes can't do it because Kidero is a thief. <laughs> His orientation is theft. Look at Mumias. He found a thriving going concern and he looted it to death. He's doing the same for the city. Look at the senator, does not even know how to execute his functions in the Senate. Instead of bringing Kidero to account, he goes there to fight with his fists. Miguna will deliver and fight with his brain, with reason, with common sense, with logic, with ideological clarity, with a vision. When you have all of this combined, and I'm a workaholic, I can work 24 hours if I have to. I have done it. Sonko says yeah. you cannot beat him. He says he is unbeatable. How, he, is he not, how is he unbeatable? Because, you know, he appeals, number one, to this same youth you're talking about. No, 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 no. Sonko does not appeal. Sonko gives handouts. Now, I will tell you why Sonko will not succeed and cannot succeed and will never succeed to be governor of Nairobi when I'm running. Hmm. Number one... No matter how much you have, and Sonko is not one of the richest uh, Nairobians or even Kenyans, but no matter even if you are the richest, you are the Kenyatta family, for example, mm -hmm. or the Moi family, mm -hmm. you cannot bribe 5 million residents. It is not even possible to bribe 500,000. Why not? You can't. You don't have the money? Why? Be because you can't. The, the nature of a looter, the nature of a cartel, is to hoard. Uh, it's called primitive accumulation. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they would not be rich. They are not stealing to give away. Uh, why are they stealing? They are stealing to keep. But Sonko so, gives so, away. But first of all, he is not giving away. I'll give you the example. Sonko is not a billionaire, okay? So he's just a millionaire. So let's assume that he has 500 million. Mm -hmm. So 500 million, if you have to bribe 5 million people, you know how much you have to give each one of them? He can't. He would have to leave where he's residing now, Runda, and go and live in Madari. He would not want to do that. So he can't give all his wealth. What he does is that he pedals. You know he pedals. That's what he does for, as his primary job. Mm. Then he steals land. As you saw, he went to Mombasa, and he has been called to the dock to explain how they stole land and whatnot. That's how he makes his money. So let's say he makes 100 million. He reserves five million to distribute all right mm -hmm. after he has stolen from the people so he gives them less than one percent out of what he has stolen that's a ripoff they are all going to committee under my administration i'm not going to play around with thieves i'm not going to play around with the drug dealers drugs destroy the moral fiber of a society it destroys the health of a society it renders everybody like a robot Everybody is a zombie. A society that is based on alcohol, drugs, and theft cannot grow, cannot prosper. And I'm not going to preside over a county that is not prospering. Tsonko has been saying lately that, you know what, don't listen to these PhD people. They're just, you know, all they do is just talk, talk, talk. Listen to a man who has his ear to the ground. That's all right, says. all right. Well, so let's, let's, let's ask the question, because most people are not asking this question. Where did this man come from? This man is not even a Nairobi resident. <coughs> this man grew up in Mombasa, mm. where he learned how to steal. So he can't assume, and people should not just say that the man knows the city. He's not from here. All right? Mm. That's number one. Number two, Sonko comes here because he distributes money, little money, as I have explained. That is not listening to the people. When Sonko goes to a neighborhood, He's not going there to, to, to listen to them. He's not going there to educate them because he's incapable of educating anybody because he has nothing between his ears. He has not gone to school. He's gone to school. He's, he's got a degree. He has a degree now. Well, everybody knows he's functionally literate. If you listen to the video, and there is a raw video shoot of what happened in the Senate, mm. the man cannot, cannot utter a comprehensive sentence in English. And you know the official language in Kenya 
is English. That is the language of the Senate. That is the language of the National Assembly. That is the language of governance. You are not going to be governor in Sheng. You are not going to be governor in Mombasa. He, he does not even speak Kikamba. He speaks some um, amalgam of Kikamba and, and, and Kiswahili mixed with some language I don't know. Mm. So, so this is how he wants... Imagine Sonko having a trip to New York where he's banned. He cannot go to the U.S. But assuming he was able to go, and Sonko goes there to meet the governor of New York, imagine how would they communicate? You see, this is what Nairobi has to think about. This man that you are saying is capable. Yes. How is he going to communicate with other governors? Now we have to discuss trade. No. Okay. No, no, no. Okay, or okay. we are going to discuss industry. Or we are going to discuss commerce. How is he going to read policy? Let's assume he has people that draft for him policy. He doesn't understand policy. How will he be able to understand, mm. synthesize, articulate the policy so that implement yeah. it? Remember... As governor, you are like a president of the county. Absolutely, but in his defense, yes, he could be like the Chinese or the Turks or, P or the Russians. He could speak in Swahili and have an interpreter. No, but listen to me. It is not just about language. It is, it is comprehension. Mm. Is the man capable of comprehending ideas? Is he capable? You see, the first thing you do as an intellectual, and, and here it is very important in leadership. You have to conceptualize an idea. You have to form it up in your mind before you utter it. Mm. Is he capable of thinking? Is he capable of conceptualization? Mm. Now, what kind of ideas can he conceptualize? Are they complex enough for governance of Nairobi? Are you willing to debate it? The answer is this. Is he willing? He, what I've, if he been, is? I've been appealing with him and Kidero yes. and the rest and to come and debate me. They can't. You know why? why? They like photo ops, PR. You go and stand there and they photograph you with a few youth when, after you have given them money. You pretend that you can do things that you can't. They hire people to tweet for them. They hire people to write for them. They cannot do anything. So when you bring them here, where you'd expect them to articulate ideas coming between their ears. They are empty. These people are completely empty. Kidero as well? Completely empty. Hold that thought. I want to see if you, would you debate. He stopped people? thinking. Kidero? He, he stopped thinking more than 20 years ago. What about Sakaja? Sakaja got ease throughout. You saw what was on there. I mean, the man, <laughs> the man failed completely at the university. <laughs> so the thing is, yeah. and, and you know, I've always wondered, because now it makes sense. I've always wondered, this man says he did actuarial sciences at uh, the University of Nairobi. That's not, that's, a, that's significant, it's right? It's a serious degree. And yet the best job he could get was a driver of PNU. Now it makes sense. This man is not capable of working. Mm. Maybe so, and then, yeah. after that, he became President Uru's PA. A man who got a degree from a reputable university mm. in actuarial sciences. Uhuru could not even hire him at the CBA bank that he owns. He could not even hire him as a clerk. Mm. He hired him as a PA. You know what a PA does? They answer phones. That's the best he could do for President Uhuru. Maybe the E... Not capable of being a governor. Maybe the E's were for excellency. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think if the man even graduated <laughs> with all the E's. Let's take a break. We're going to come back. Talk some more talk some more about what you would do for Nairobi and also so, so, yeah I will talk. Uh, we'll take a break yeah. and also the hate levels in this country yes. are you are you bothered by them are you disturbed by the hate levels we'll talk about that Miguna Miguna is in the house and he's sparing nobody coming out guns blazing he wants to be your governor people of Nairobi are you listening would you vote for this man keep tweeting at Miguna Miguna at Queen Anger Jeff the hashtag Miguna times two, as in Miguna X number two. Jeff Kanagi live at the Villa Rosa Kempinski takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.